You know what America needs? Well, America needs a lot of things. But America specifically needs the remnant body of Christ to rise up and be the disciples of Jesus that once again turn the world upside down. Now, they, that may sound radical, but it isn't at all. If we'll just obey the Father and honor the Son, I believe we can change America. Stay tuned for my wide-ranging conversation with my good friend Chad Schaefer in this episode of Soaring Eagle Radio. Remember that your failure to be informed does not make me a wacko. Well, the time has come, the walrus said, to talk of other things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings. I have certain rules I live by. My first rule, I don't believe anything the government tells me. And I don't take very seriously the media or the press in this country. Nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Hello, and welcome to Soaring Eagle Radio. Your host is Mike Spaulding. Get ready to be challenged and encouraged as you consider today's news and Mike's commentary from a biblical perspective. Now, let's join Mike. Hi, folks. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Soaring Eagle Radio. You know all the places that you can listen. And so I'll just mention SoaringEagleRadio.com. You can go there and listen to the show and all those other places as well. I am, I am blessed and, and overjoyed to welcome back to Soaring Eagle Radio, my friend, Chad Schaefer. Of course, he is the author, as as most of you know, co-author of the book, The World and the Bondage of Egypt Under the Triumphal Arch of Titus. And if you haven't got that book yet, folks, you need to go out there and get it. I know it's available on Amazon, and I think you can get it directly from Chad, especially if you want an autograph. Chad, welcome back to Soaring Eagle Radio. Well, thanks, Brother Mike. It's certainly a pleasure and an honor and a privilege to be on here with you. I just uh, truly enjoy your work, Brother. Well, I appreciate hearing that. Those are very kind words, Chad. We we really have um, developed a friendship. It's uh, I don't think it's a reach to say a mutual admiration uh, relationship. I appreciate you and, and your stand on things and, and especially your heart. Chad, that comes through in, in, in all of my interactions with you, your heart for the Father and, and, and for his people, and, uh, and especially uh, for the body of Christ. And, and that's something that, that I, I think, let's, let's start there, Chad. I, I think what one of the things that's sorely lacking in the body today is compassion and mercy and grace toward one another. What do you think? Yeah, I would I would have to fully agree, Mike. And again, no surprise why we have become such fast friends, I think, is that our hearts and our minds seem to be on the same page no matter what day it is. And despite the fact that there's miles between us and we have dinner, different interactions uh, with uh, different in- groups individually and our local level, but you know, a, a lot of the people that we speak to, um, you know, do do cross each other's paths. Uh, folks that may listen to me or have heard me uh, follow you as well when it comes to Internet and the social aspect of that. But, you know, it really is uh, something that touches my heart because – Here's where it starts, and and this may be a weird place to start, but it, it it's part of this conversation, is that each of us, um, you know, we have our path, whatever at whatever point we've come to the faith in the Father, you know, whether we've been walking, uh, you know, just a couple weeks or have been walking years, the, the point is, none of us have it all figured out have all the answers in and of ourselves. Now, the Father may have gifted us uh, with his gifts for us, 
um, in unique ways that have allowed us to understand something that somebody else does. But we also have to understand that there may be a brother there who understands something in their call that I don't, that they have an understanding. And I, I think we forget that, that I, no, no one of us is meant to be the whole house, right, to use the scriptural references. You know, it, each, it takes each one of us or – not every one of us is a hand or every one of us is an ear or the nose when it comes to the body. And I think I think sometimes, uh, you know, I can't say for what reasons people in the body forget this, but it seems to occur quite regularly. And it causes, it's the cause for a lot of unnecessary strife between fellow believers. You know, um, there are some things that I may see in the scripture differently than others they're not foundational things uh, the foundation and the basis of our faith is that we believe and follow the messiah we believe that he was born to save us from our sin to rescue us from sin that he died and on the third day that he rose again and is seated at the right hand of the father and that only by faith through him can we have eternal life that's that's the basis of it and and then there are of course all the things that build from that that, but that is the basis of our faith that unites us together with one another. Now, when it comes to other things in the scriptures that we may have spent years studying on or a little bit of studying on, and we have a perspective on that, then to me that's an avenue that we can have for discussion. And it's it's okay that if somebody has a different understanding or if they've come to a different conclusion based on their own experience – in that word, but you you will never get to that place or never uh, be heard yourself if you don't first listen. It's such a critical skill to be able to first listen to folks. And, you know, th these are things that are, I think, um, forgotten. And I think you touched on it in your book. It's discipleship. Mm. Um, yeah. in, in this age where a lot of communication can occur through Internet, uh, there isn't that local body of accountability that used to be there. Mm -hmm. And with you compound that with churches that have fallen away, have the pulpit great. Mm -hmm. And then you you have uh, you just have a a a, a place that has no sun that is ripe for uh, growth that is abnormal. Um, it, it's not conducive to a discipleship or a mentorship where you can have uh, someone there to mentor you as you grow. And, you know, one of the first things we have to understand is wherever we are, there's room to grow. There's going to be somebody who understands this better. And we we have to understand that. Um, you know, Mike, it's, it's, it's been, I, I say funny, but I don't mean funny as in ha ha, but it's been, it's just been interesting how the Father has in my life always uh, coupled or paired me with a person who has been older in the faith. And I'm not talking about a little older. It seems like the people that I've been closest to have been 15, 20, or more years in my life that have joined me as an accountability brother. You know, another man in the faith who has been longer. It seems that he's always paired me with those. Now, one of the first person that he paired me with has passed away. He had died. He's died now several years ago. But I re, I just remember um, that being such a unique God thing that he would join me and knit me at the heart with a brother. And I think that's what you and I have. He's just knitted me at a heart with a brother who has been longer in the faith. That you know he and it's so weird because of the relationship we had he was coming to the prayer study that i have started i had been teaching out of a book uh, uh the book on prayer and his name is of course going to escape me now but he was in uh late 1800s uh, early 1900s reformer out of the dutch reformed church he preached in south america or south africa and i'm i'm trying to Andrew say all Murray. this Andrew Murray, thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course, I taught about out of that for three years. Anyway, wow. so he was coming to the class uh, to study on that so that he could learn. And yet, 
I was learning so much from him at the same time he had learned about prayer stuff that he was saying that he had never learned in the many more years he had in ministry. But he just knit us together through that. And he was a mentor for me in in growth and how to proceed. See, he taught me that there were people younger than me who could teach me something by his attitude towards me. And he took the time to talk with me, uh, work through me with the scriptures, stuff that that we may have seen differently. He listened first. I, I think there's such a lack of actual discipline, uh, discipleship taking place today. And you know that that condemnation is as much on those who should be seeking someone to disciple them as it is on those who have uh, been elders in the faith who have not sought someone to disciple. Uh, that's a problem. Yeah. It's a real problem. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And Chad, very wise words, uh, beautiful synopsis of um, the current climate uh, within too much of the body of Christ. Uh, you and I have chatted about this briefly before. I wonder um, how much of it what we see the the conflict um, the denigration of other brothers and sisters because of a a particular point of view um, that is here or there when it comes to the subject of salvation. I wonder how much of it and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, Chad we can uh, attribute to the culture generally speaking um, Folks know. I mean, I, I don't. I don't make a secret of the fact that I'm, I'm 62 years old now. <laughs> so I, I've seen a little bit, and I've watched our culture. I've watched our societal interactions over the last 30 years really degenerate in, into a place I never imagined that I would see. And I wonder. My question is this, Chad. How much of the world are believers adopting and carrying into their relationships with one another, and they're not even aware of it? Well, I think it's I think it's a huge part of it. I mean, when you think of the way that the younger generations today, and I can say that now because I'm at 46, but I'm getting closer to that 50-year mark now, Mike. <laughs> so I can say that now. Uh, I, I I hope it doesn't show, but <laughs> I am headed that way. But uh, the the younger <laughs> the younger generation's uh, ability to communicate with one another has really been drastically reduced. In that the media uh, for which their communication takes place is greatly internet driven you think of their communication with each other is via text message where generally you have four or five lines of text in which you're trying to communicate uh whatever uh twitter you're you you're limited to 125 letters uh instagram or name any other social media platform that there has that is internet based and they're reduced to what they can say. And so the communication is really always an almost surface level. And, and I'm sorry, but men and women are both much deeper than 125 letters in the alphabet. Amen. And, and it takes time. It takes time to communicate. You know, I, I learned this, and I'm sure you did too. Uh, when you have thoughts in your heart or things that you want to discuss um, and share with somebody, it really is quite a, a practice when you go to set those thoughts down in words that could be read and comprehended by someone else, uh, like when I was writing a book. Yes. Now, we use a lot of filler words when we're having a conversation with someone standing next to us. But when you're trying to communicate an idea fully and completely as you understand it and make it relatable and easily understood in the way you intended by a reader, 
then you really begin to learn that communication is really an art and a skill. And it's one that past generations uh, had because they didn't have the, any other means or platform to do it. They, they communicated face to face and that was a skill that was naturally acquired by the younger generations as they came up. And that's really been lost. And, uh, and I think that's a huge contributing factor to this. The The second part of that is it's is because of the means by which men and women communicate with one another today, even spouses uh, being reduced to such uh, short sentences and impersonal uh, via the Internet that it really allows to us to impersonalize and not realize that there are people, God's children, made in his image, just as we are, on the other side of the letters that we're seeing and the sentences that we're seeing. They have feelings as well. They have thoughts as well. They are capable of just as deep emotional uh, feelings as we are. I use that word feelings, understanding that that's a landmine word in and of itself today. It's true. We have we are emotionals. We are capable of wrath, anger, jealousy, um, to being being hurt. We're all capable of that because we see that our Father is capable of those things. He says that he is a jealous God, you know, and that he loves deeply. That he becomes angry. All these things we are capable of because our Father is also capable of them. But and they each have a right place in their in context of the truth. Uh, but when we don't communicate, when we are not able to communicate effectively the thoughts that we have in regards to our feelings as they are, should be aligned with the truth, then again, there is no, there is no means uh, to communicate and understand or even hear the person who's trying to communicate us effectively so that we can comprehend. It leaves so much room for misunderstanding uh, that it's, it's of course, obvious how uh, disputes and disruptions in, in fights, so to speak, yeah. uh, can take place. Yeah, very, very true. And, and folks, I, I hope that you're following what, what Chad is saying here, because what he's, what he's, uh, very clearly stating is that uh, technology, uh, for for all of the wonderful things that it provides for us, technology also uh, renders us or is rendering us. We are in the process of being uh, rendered incapable of communicating on a level that that needs to happen, especially within the body of Christ, as brother, brother, brother to sister, so on and so forth. Uh, we we have got to tap the brakes on this and 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 pause and think about how we are treating one another. Now, um, one of the reasons, Chad, that I wanted to follow this line of of, of thinking and, and conversation is is because I am uh, teaching through the Gospel of Mark on Sunday mornings and uh, chapters nine and ten. Uh, in the Gospel of Mark, really focus on Jesus' teaching, uh, his his focused, specific teaching to the disciples, uh, because now he's within a year, less than a year now, from Calvary's cross. And so he wants to spend those last 10 months or so really hammering home some biblical truths. And uh, if folks will look at, if they've got their Bible handy if they'll look at the gospel of mark and and let me turn there because this is this is needed badly uh within the church today um mark chapter 9 uh let's start at verse um let's start at verse 14 let's 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 go there and i'm just going to read this if that's okay chad um, I'm, I'm there. Okay. But well, they're traveling. They're, uh, verse 14, when they came back, the disciples, they saw a large crowd. So they had uh, come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, P- 
Peter, James, and John had witnessed that. So they're coming back. The crowd is all around the other disciples. And uh, Jesus asks them in verse 16, what were you discussing with them? And uh, it says that verse 17, and one of the crowd answered him, teacher, uh, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And, and, and so he, he goes on to describe what that spirit was doing to him in, in verse 18. And, and, I, and I told your disciples to cast it out and they could not. And so Jesus answered them, O unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with? So anyway, what, what, what Christ is, is driving at here is, listen, you guys have got to learn to trust me and what I am telling you uh, as the truth, because I'm not going to be with you very much longer. So here was a situation when he wasn't with them. He was up on the mount and they couldn't do what he had already trained them and gave them the authority to do. So that's the context. Now, when we drop down to... Um, Verse 33, notice it says, so now they've left that scene and now they came to Capernaum and when he was in the house, he began to question them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent again. Now, <clears throat> both places, what I just read, they were silent before and now they're silent again in verse 33. What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent for on the way they had discussed with one another which one of them was the greatest. And notice in verse 35, and here's the point. Sitting down, he called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of, of all. So here's the point that I want to make in the context of what Chad was saying. Folks, we are not going to be great in the Father's eyes by climbing over each other's backs, trying to get someplace. God has not called us to do that. It's just the opposite. He has called us to humble ourselves and to serve him by serving his people. If you want to be great in the body of Christ, then serve the body of Christ. Wash feet. Stop Amen. arguing, backbiting, stabbing people in the back or in the front or insulting or, or, or however you want to describe it. It has gotten out of control. And Chad, quite frankly, it sickens me. And I refuse to participate in that kind of behavior. Now, I'm not talking about uh, refusing to call out blatant uh, heresy or false teaching. That's not what I'm talking about. We have a responsibility to do that. But even then, we are to do it in love and, I believe, respect. But what I'm talking about is the unnecessary arguing, fighting over things that, that really, at the end of the day... Do they impact eternity? No, not not for a moment do they impact eternity. And I know you have some thoughts on that too. Well, exactly. The, what stands out uh, to me this is the desire to serve first. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, years ago my wife and I went to a uh, marriage uh, conference that was put on by uh, Family Life. And uh, we, it was a gift that, that some uh, other members of our church had done so that we could have a weekend away as a husband and wife uh, and still grow uh, towards each other. And it has stuck with me, and I've said this recently on – I can't remember if it was my program or, or, or another interview. And, you know, it, it sounded so funny, but it hit me so hard when it was said, and it seemed so obvious but one of the things that they, one of the speakers said there is your spouse is not your enemy. And we're talking about conflict within a marriage. Your spouse is not your enemy. And it's like that that should be something that's really obvious. But when you think of conflict or, or a conflict of thought, it, it comes to the same same thing. It, our eyes get taken off of the desire to serve the other to lift the other one up and to get placed upon ourselves in in forgetting who the other is the desire should be served first to serve the the second aspect of that when it comes to offense is forgetting who we are uh not not in Christ but as we are without Christ uh Mike I know my own sinful past. Even though I was raised in the church, I knew 
I knowing what I knew, I should have known better, but I know what I have done and how much grief and hurt that I have caused. And it's never forgotten me. And the father has shown me how wicked I am, not just am, am still capable of if I don't allow him to be first in my life every day. And this reminds me, this reminder of who I am and that I am wicked incapable of wickedness in and of myself is a constant reminder that I cannot quickly judge a, a, another brother or another sister because I know that to point a finger at them is to confess my own sin. And it, it, it if, so that's two parts of this. The, the other person is not my enemy, and I am just as wicked, and it's just as much to blame for conflict that can arise as, as the person I may be speaking to. And if we are going to serve them, that means that I want what is best for them. I want them to have understanding. I want them to have uh, compassion. I want them to have growth. I want them to be able to walk in the in the providence of God and the power of God and then the authority of our Father. I want all of that for them. And if I want that for them, then that's going to change the words I use when I interact with that person, right? It should. Yes, absolutely should. Yep, you're absolutely right, Chad. That should frame our our uh, approach, uh, our, our thoughts concerning other people. Well, and it reminds me, the scripture says that, that the world will know that you belong to Christ. How? By the love that you have for the brethren. By the love that you and, demonstrate for the brethren. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah, and, and the, the, there's another part of this. I mean, there's multiple parts to this. But the other part to this may be, I don't know why that person may be acting the way they are. There could be a thousand reasons why someone may be saying the things they say. And it could be a diversity, but you're never going to know that if you don't listen to them and yeah. ask questions. Well, why do you think that way? Where, what, Have you read something that you got this from so that I can read it too and, and, and see what they're saying? You know, conversation is just that. It's going to take time. A true conversation to understand one another is going to take time. If we're not willing to give that time to the other person so that they can explain themselves, you know, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, our vocabularies, and I, I'm sure you're aware of this, Mike, when you look at readers from the 1800s and what was they were required then to know oh, in yeah. vocabulary, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's not even compare. You can't even compare it to today to what our children are com required to know in order to, to pass a level. It's like a 10 times yeah. the difference. Yeah. And so when we lack the words and the meanings behind them, we then become incapable of, of expressing what we may be feeling because there's a word for it, but we don't know it. And we misapply the words that we want to use. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and, Amen. Amen. That's so true. You know what, Jan? I think this is a good point. Uh, for a break, a word from our sponsors, and we're gonna we're gonna be right back after this, folks. So please stay with us. Clean Foods for You is dedicated to providing the best quality food you can buy next to fresh from a farmer's market. Our stringent quality controls and absolute zero GMO and testing for heavy metals makes us unique in the storable foods market. Try our products today and join the many others in discovering the best clean foods available in the storable food market. Order online at www.cleanfoodsforyou.com. Dr. Mike Spaulding has hit a home run with his new book, Hashtag MTPGA, Make the Pulpit Great Again, 12 Things Christians Can Do Right Now. In Make the Pulpit Great Again, Dr. Spaulding has addressed some of the gravest ills plaguing the American pulpit. Only through a policy of complacency and compromise adopted by the nation's pastors has the once great United States ceded the moral high ground and set the standard for the rest of the world in pornography, addiction, pervasion, and the murder of untold millions killed in state-sponsored, taxpayer-funded abortion mills. The words in Dr. Spaulding's book contain the secret to restoring this country to her former glory. 
For if we are ever to make America great again, we must first have a national call to repentance by our church leaders. We must make the pulpit great again. Available on Amazon and other retail sellers. Hi friends, Works LLC is a manufacturer of custom-made holsters, mag carriers, knife sheaths, and accessories. Works is your one-stop shop for high quality inside or outside the waistband concealed carry holster. Works LLC is a Christian and family owned and operated company that values made in the USA. They are a proud sponsor of Soaring Eagle Radio. Visit Works LLC www.werkz.com works.com and when you do tell Shan that you heard about him on Soaring Eagle Radio. Works LLC 855-937-5901 855-937-5901 Works LLC Okay, thanks folks for listening to those spots for our sponsors. We appreciate their support of uh, Soaring Eagle Radio. Chad and I have been having a very good conversation about the body of Christ and how we are to relate to one another. Back in the day when I was in school, and that was a long time ago, was, <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> all, all of this fell under the general category of, I believe the phrase was interpersonal communications and how <laughs> we were to speak to one another. And and it, it, it occurred to me, Chad, that, that we uh, that I forgot to do this, so I want to take just a moment and I want to say hi to your good friends, uh, my good friends, Tom Dunn and Jared Cressman. I We would be remiss if we didn't bring them <laughs> up. And, and I'm going to give you the floor if you'd like to say anything to either one of them. Here's your opportunity. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, these two are such an inspiration to all of us in such um, good role models in what I'm always trying to do with my show, and that is activate the body to begin wherever it is that they're being called to called to minister, at least to begin. Now, I understand that some of them are not ready, and they know they're not ready to begin leading, uh, but there's still avenues by which they anybody and everyone can serve. But these two, their boldness, their courage to address uh, – areas uh, that have needed to be addressed, long ignored by the church. They're just such an example, and, and I love them both dearly for what they provide to the body. They they provide a, a function and a, and a service to all of us that is irreplaceable, and I just love them dearly. You know, I had them just last night on my show, and, and you know, those guys can talk about anything and, 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 and they do. And they're, and they're both very wise about it. It's just, uh, they're just such encouraging role models, people that we can all learn from and grow from their understanding and their service. And I, I, I can't, I look forward to every day knowing, um, knowing these kind of men in life. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll bring that up too. Maybe this is a good, part of that, Mike, and you may have other questions, but this is another aspect that was on my heart too, and I know we talked uh, off recording about this as well. There's another mutual friend of ours by the name of John Robertson yes. uh, for, for the Hagman and Hagmans. He does a, a lot of their production yeah. uh, and even on their show sometimes. And he and I have talked about this and actually evidence of uh, this as well. Choosing well who we have as friends, that is yeah. such an important key to staying firmly grounded in the faith. If you cannot choose well whom you have close and consider someone you would have in your inner circle, those who you can feel confident in expressing and saying stuff uh, that isn't meant for a public consumption, something that can be intimate between a brother and a brother and a sister and sister. We have to choose well who those people are, and we can't be qu quick to do so. You know, my, I, I listened to you uh, for a long time uh, in many of your broadcasts before I ever decided to reach out to you. And that didn't used to be the way I am, I, as you might <laughs> understand being 
the way that the Father has made me. I am very much a social person. I love people. I love to interact with people. But there were many times when that got me into trouble because I would quickly make friends with people and allow them to be be a part of the inner circle and you know what it wasn't very wise in the end because the, these people were not uh, equally yoked with me in the place that uh, I was with the father I called them good friends but they had no relationship with the father uh, at least not to the to the uh, desire to the extent that I saw it but I you will allow a lot of things to come into your life that shouldn't be there but not being careful about who we allow to be personal friends uh, with you on that level. Um, So that's another area I think that we've just got to learn to be careful in who, who do you have around you? And Mike, it seems like you and I have developed a lot of those same friendships. And, um, you know, I want to say it's because of, (laughs) <laughs> I would l- love to be able to say it's because I'm wise, but I, I see the fact that these people are wise because they I found out after the fact that we have same, the same relationship, whether they have thoughtfully and purposely done it or not. There are a number of people now that I've just become so thankful. And I can say that now because it's such a contrast when when uh, the period of my life was for me to write this, uh, the book that I did, which we talked about on in your last program, uh, between that work and family, it consumed every moment of my time. And because of that reason, I, I was not participating in a number of the activities that I used to with my local body of believers, the the Bible study groups or the uh, service opportunities that the church had, whatever they may be, you know, drives or uh, food functions or going to the homeless shelter, whatever it may have been. I didn't participate that in that for a good three, four or five years <laughs> while I was researching and writing. I just I didn't have the time and I was being called to do what I had done. And I knew that and I was to be obedient. And because of that, I was socially separated uh, from people, and it allowed me the time I needed to examine that aspect of my life. You, you know, I, I missed it. <laughs> Number one, I didn't miss it, but it allowed me to examine the the friendships I had. And then that contrast now, since publishing the book at 2016, and I, for lack of better of word, perhaps here that is, reestablishing friendships now within my my new mode of service to the father. And it really is. Uh, I feel like this, this publishing of the book was a major reason, uh, you know, perhaps not the reason, but a major component of why the father uh, brought me to be, to begin with. This was a mission that he had set before me in, in my life and his desire for me in my life, that I would be the vessel by which he would share the information that was shared in the book. And, the relationships that have developed since publishing that, like yourself or uh, Tom and uh, Jared or John or other mutual friends that you and I may have together, have become, again, because of that contrast, so much more valuable to me. They are some, so much more precious, and I'm so much more very protective of those relationships and the people. Uh <laughs> With the topic that we've been discussing, do I share a common belief in everything with the people that we just mentioned? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, I and I brought this up privately, uh, not directly with you, Mike, but I I'm a pre wrath post trib believer. I know that you are a pre trib believer. Yeah. You know, however. That has not diminished, taken away, or even put a dent in the love that I have for you as my brother. Mm-hmm. And it has made me so much more defensive because I know you feel in like manner towards me and see the same way I do that these are not the things that should get in to interfere with our mess and our service to one another. Uh, Amen. And yet for so many, these things become 
the the avenue or uh, the reason that brothers don't walk or and sisters don't talk with one another anymore. They don't talk, walk, or share, you know, or defend, you know. And you know, just recently, and I'm not going to go into the details. I I was put in the position to where I both had to defend myself and defend the other person. Um, being a public figure is such a, a different thing, something that I've had to learn and watch others who have gone before me who are public figures or are better well known in uh, the amount of, uh, uh, to be blunt, uh, Pastor Mike, garbage that comes your yeah. way. Yep. And how people will, that come to know who I am because of the ministry I am now serving in, the capacity of ministry I'm now serving in. They begin to say, just like we see in, in the scriptures, kind of this argument we were reading in a Mark. I'm a follower of Paul, or I'm a follower of Mark, or I'm a follower. And for some reason, they, when they see that I have a friendship with somebody that they can't agree with, then suddenly there's an issue with me. And it's like, I, you know, I, and sometimes, Mike, maybe this is wrong of me, but sometimes out of spite, I want to have a friendship with somebody uh just for the reason to say, you know what, I can't be def- – I'm not going to be put in the box by you of who I, I should or should not be a friend with, who I should or should not reach out to, who I should or should not speak with uh, because you feel like I belong to a certain camp or because I belong to a certain group of people. Well, you're, you're a pre-wrath or a post-trib believer. How can you have any fellowship with somebody uh, like Mike? And I'm just using this – yeah. Uh, right now, as an example, yeah. I find that so, so ignorant, so yeah. lacking yeah. Uh, in understanding that it does bring. I, I, I mean, I understand where they come from because I've been there, yeah. uh, you, you know, myself. So I don't want to be compassionate towards them, but it it frustrates me and it makes me sad. Just as you said, it just makes me sad that this would be something that the enemy would use to divide and make us weaker as a body, yeah. to make us weaker as servants, to make us weaker as an examples to the world because watches us. Yeah. Those who may have been drawn to listen to us at whatever point, and there's always new people coming to know who we are, yeah. that this would be the for, for perhaps the first example <laughs> that they would see of what it means to believe her when they see something that you've done or something you said. And <laughs> it's like, this is the example? Yeah. That you, that you are of the Messiah? It's like, no, we have to hold ourselves to higher standards. Yes. Amen, brother. So true. And and uh, while you were describing that, Chad, one of the areas that uh, is it just sticks out to me, it, it's just an unavoidable um, example of what you've been talking about is in the the quote unquote conference scene. And mm. what, what what I've mm. observed is that uh, you can get invited to certain conferences uh, to speak if you hold a particular viewpoint on the rapture. Um, but if mm-hmm. you hold a different viewpoint from the conference hosts on the rapture, you might as well forget about getting an invite. You yeah. can, you can get invited to a conference if you hold a particular position on a, a – and I could go down through them, and I'm not going to do it. But I could go down through I know. You know, four or five different subjects that uh, when it comes to eternity – again, and some people may be offended or upset at me for saying this, Chad, but the Father – is not going to welcome you as a good and faithful servant into your eternal home with him based on your view of the earth, of the tribulation, of the timing of it, of baptism, of tongues, of any of these things, brother. It is going to be based on what did you say about my son? And we've got to get this right. We have got to get this right, Chad. We've got to... Uh, and you're so right. And, you know, it's it's it hurts uh, not maybe maybe on a personal level, but because of how much more you could see is accomplished if it were different 
if these leaders who m many, many people look up to who, who are hosting the conferences, if they would allow for the dialogue to take place, if they will would allow for brotherly love, compassion to share in the dialogue, how much more could be gained? How much how many more people could be brought into the body and one for Christ? If the ones who are leading and up front would allow themselves to listen, you know, they might have understood and been teaching here's part of they might have taught and been considered the expert in whatever topic you know pre-trip rapper they've considered the expert on that and many people have looked to them for the answer then to uh i i don't know what it is mike but be to allow for the other position to be spoken about as if it could take away from the position, look, here's the thing. If you're right in Christ, you have no worry or no fear of anybody being able to take that away. That's right. If it's true. That's right. You, you, you don't even have to defend it. Our father is perfectly capable and able to defend himself in the truth. Yeah. So he does not need my defense. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing is, just because we may have been considered expert in something does not mean that we have may be correct we could have been wrong mm -hmm. maybe you have been wrong for 30 years yeah. what what is the right to do not what does your feelings say what is the right thing to do in this is it more important to you the position you hold in the people's eyes than being right with christ yes, and the father yeah. on the matter yeah is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, you nailed it right there. How yeah. many more? How many more people of those who look to you as the expert would be edified if they saw that you confessed that you no longer can hold a position, to, and here's the reason why? How much more would they look to that person who is willing to confess their error than one who blind who will willingly continue in error even if they think it might be wrong? Yeah, and that I, goes I, on. That goes on too, Chad. I, and I see this as word right now out to them, but I'm saying it also, Mike, as a caution to myself. I never want to be in the position where that becomes the, the way I am. This is why I say we must choose carefully those who are friends yeah. who are going to also be willing to call you out privately. And when they feel like you've gone in error, said something in wrong, right? Or, yeah. you know, we it's it's just a much. That's part of the discipleship. Yeah. And if we if we surrounded ourselves with a bunch of yes men, it's so dangerous. Dangerous. It's so dangerous. Yeah, ab absolutely is. And and I can tell you, a friend will will not be afraid to say something that may that may upset you is going to place his wager on the fact that the bond that you have together that you share in christ this friendship will weather uh, any kind of uh, uh, any kind of offense that that you might take and he's going to speak humbly truth uh, into your life and and we know this is true and i'll give my wife kathy as an example she God has designed her and and I think that that this is this <laughs> is the father's design for all wives now whether men realize that take advantage of that or or nurture that in their wives that's a whole nother story <laughs> but, <laughs> but 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 kathy is is a perfect complement to me and it never fails Chad that she provides me with a perspective that I've oftentimes never considered and it almost always causes me to pause to take a step back and think wow how could i have not considered that and, and i find that mm -hmm. is priceless chad priceless and we need friends like that we need our wives to be that but we need friends like that too absolutely i, I i've been married uh, 26 years this year uh in I can, I can say that for a surety, you know, that 
that my wife has also been that for me. I'm a very uh, outspoken person. Uh, I, do, I, I like being a part of the conversations that are happening around me. Uh, sometimes maybe I like a little too quickly to offer my thoughts, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not too afraid to admit that. <laughs> um, sometimes I jump into the conversation a little quickly and maybe I should have, uh, listened a little bit longer, <laughs> but she is very much the opposite of that. She, she would much rather, uh, be in the background or not even seen sometimes, uh, uh, that way she's not quick to be a social person and you know in that regard we are two opposites but you know both have their value uh, she she is a a quiet server right she she still loves to serve she still loves to care and she will you know she is she will be dedicated to the person who whom she calls a friend uh, and she's always there for him so that doesn't change but I, I can certainly understand that compliment because I see the wisdom sometimes uh, in, in in different situations in in that being slow to to speak that that desire to talk it over privately first to ask the questions privately before we go shooting our mouths off in whatever public setting it is we happen to be you know too quickly you know and. Um, you know, and she's a, there are many other ways that my wife are for me, but it, here's the thing, Mike, you know, when it comes to the body, again, it comes back to recognizing that there are people who have gifts. We are not capable of thinking of all things at all times. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, you know, we have our peace, you know, be, be faithful in your peace, but also know that somebody else has their peace to provide as well. And just as called by the Father to do what they're doing as we are. And, uh, you know, it's only together that this body is going to function as it should. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen, brother. So folks can find you, uh, Disputed Lands, on uh, Now You See TV is, uh, Mondays? Yes, Monday nights. Mm -hmm. Monday nights, uh, 9 o'clock? Nine o'clock. Yep. Most times, unless the guest has uh, other reasons like <laughs> needing to get to bed early and, you know, or generally uh, older in their years, you yeah. know, sometimes they have to go to bed earlier. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Folks, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing because Chad's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> so generally it's nine o'clock. Um, uh, I also have uh, my website. At, it's uh, thearchesofegypt.com in cases that's too long for you. You can simply find the same website by going to Chad. Schaefer.com. That's Chad, C H A D S C H A 1 F E R.com. Uh, I'm also doing this thing, Mike, where I am actually, uh, in, to the best of my ability, giving the book away free uh, on the Fringe Radio. Uh, uh, what is that? It's Fringe Radio. Fringe Radio uh, Network. Network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, by Johnny McMahon, yeah. which I'm basically reading through my book, uh, sometimes word for word and providing my commentary or thoughts I had while writing it. Uh, I've not got all the way through the book. I've only done like uh, four episodes, maybe, I think. So there's plenty of time to get caught up. They're only an hour long, but I'm giving the book away for free there. Wow. Uh, uh, by doing that, I, I you know, I see the information that is in the book, not something that belonged to me. It's, it's information the Father wanted everyone else to have. I mm -hmm. just happened to be blessed and given the grace to be the one he chose to do this through. Okay. But it's for everybody else. And so I want to make sure if they can afford to buy it and they can uh, afford to, uh, you know, provide me for a daily uh, part of my daily living by buying the book. Of course, they should, yeah. as we all should for our brothers and sisters. But if they cannot, uh, that doesn't mean that they don't deserve to have the information. Uh, if I can easily provide it, and I can't. Yeah. Uh, so if they if they can't uh, contribute, then that's okay. I yeah. want to be able to provide that. Very kind. And so they can find that in Fringe Radio. It's called, that show is called Arches of Egypt. So it's very similar. Yeah. Um, on Twitter, at Schaefmeister, M E I. S T E R that's S C H A F E M E I S T E R on Twitter 
And I think those are about the other only well, – Facebook, of course. You can find me on Facebook, MeWe. Um, uh, so you can find me and just search my name, and you, you'll find some way to connect me. You can email me. <laughs> so I, now, I'm available. Yes, yeah, that's right. You can find him. It's not it's not hard to find him. Um, I, I follow Chad in all those places. Um uh, you're going to be speaking at a conference. I think it's in uh, August. Yes, yeah. I am. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Yes. Yeah. So this is going to be called – it's called the uh, Take on the World uh, 2018 Conference. This is in Vermilion, Ohio. It's uh, August 24th, 25th, 26th. Now, I don't know if those tickets may be uh, completely sold out by this time. This is heard. Uh, but there, it's just a phenomenal – Mike, to your point, diverse uh, group of uh, of speakers. They'll be talking about uh, cosmology. They'll be talking about faith. They'll be talking about finances. They'll, there's a speaker who, whose uh, topic is going to be uh, vaccines. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. it's going to it's really more of a retreat than it is a conference. I mean, if something uh, is not something that you're interested in, don't worry. There's a speaker there who will be covering something else uh, that there's the opportunity to get to. Uh, it's just, there's like 25 speakers, I think, Mike, wow. uh, which wow. as you and I know, it's just, that's, 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 that's a lot that for a three day weekend. It sure is. It sure is. And, now, uh, is there, is there a website uh, that they can go to and check that out? Yes. You can go. Uh, yeah. Take on the world 18. Uh, dot com. Okay. Just go to take on the world 18.com. I mean, you can find that. And also, Mike, uh, though there's no place you can find it yet on the internet, if you f uh, follow me today, uh, I'll be sure to announce it. But I know for a fact there's going to be another conference I'll be speaking at in November, uh, I think around the 9th, 10th, and 11th, somewhere around that time, that's going to be in the Nashville area. So right here in the middle of the country. Mm, uh, so if, uh, yeah, so if, uh, you know, the conference has been too far west for you or too far east for you. Will there be an opportunity? This is going to be put on uh, by Doug Krieger uh, and a, a bunch of other brothers uh, out of one body life who are based in California. Henry Hahn, um, whom people who have followed me might have heard of already. But uh, I know that uh, Doug Camp will be speaking there. Uh, John Holler will be there, another gentleman uh, by the name of uh, Gavin Finley, uh, who's become a good friend of mine. And other speakers who are not yet no men may known, but that'll be in November, so there'll be another one at the end of this year. All right, perfect, perfect. Well, there you go, folks. Take advantage of uh, all that information. These conferences that are coming up, buy the book, buy the <laughs> book, folks. I can't encourage you enough to buy the book. It's a great book, <laughs> and, and we should probably one of these days. Chad, we've been saying it for a long time, but one of these days we should probably circle back and have another conversation about it. Maybe we'll get that on the schedule hey, too. Mike, any excuse to uh, we? Not that I don't uh, think we need one, but any excuse I have to come on to talk with you again, brother, I'll I will take it. I will take it. So Thank I, you. I just uh, love being on here, brother. Well, that's very kind, Chad. I appreciate that, and and I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for joining me today. My my pleasure again, Brother Mike. Thank you. God, God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother. Love you. Love you, man. Song Eagle Radio is a production of Transforming Word Ministries and is released under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. You may subscribe to the show on iTunes, follow us on Facebook where you can discuss this episode, and follow Soaring Eagle Radio on Twitter at Soaring Eagle Rad and listen to every episode from our website www.soaringeagleradio.com The opening audio montage collection was created by Micah 68 Productions. Visit them on the internet at www.mika68.com for more information. Friends, remember the Apostle Paul's admonition to the believers meeting in Rome. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I'm your host, Mike Spaulding. Thank you for joining us today for this edition of Soaring Eagle Radio. Thanks for tuning in today to the Soaring Eagle Radio program. For more information about the show, write us at Soaring Eagle Radio, 682 West Grand Avenue, Lima, Ohio, 
5801. You may also contact Mike directly by email at the following address, Pastor Mike at WOH.RR.com. God bless you today as you seek him.